during the lockdown women lost their jobs work participation rates have been falling drastically female labor force participation rate in india the women labor participation in india is among the lowest in the world the recorded female labor force participation rate never exceeded 40% if you check the number of women participating in the labor force it is just 32.8% to give you a comparison this number is 56.2% in us 58.2% in uk 60.5% in china and even bangladesh is above india at 37% and India ranks 135 out of 146 countries in terms of gender equality this number is so significant because of two reasons number 1 female represents 50% of the population and number 2 is very interesting a few days ago my mom was not available to cook so she asked me to order from zomato at that moment it stuck into my mind if a indian woman is becoming ill for one day can increase the business of zomato then india which is on its way to become a developed nation If this 32% increases to 50%, which is almost 12 crores women will be unavailable for the domestic work, then how big this opportunity could be? But when I started searching about it, I was stunned that there was not a single video that focused on the business opportunity. So I decided to do my own research, and while I was researching, I found this is the real gold mine that everybody neglected. To tell you about how big this opportunity is, check this report by World Bank, which shows. If female labor participation would be equal to male then it would contribute 25 trillion to the GDP I repeat 25 trillion to the GDP and this number is 1 trillion for India which means India's GDP can increase by 27% if female labor participation equals to male If you still don't think this opportunity is big I will give you an example and after that I'm damn sure you'll pay attention to each and every word of mine To give you an example I will use the case study of none other than Gillette People in 1915 Gillette was just making safety razors and its targeted customers were only those men who liked to have a clean shaved look and after trying very hard Gillette was not able to increase its market share beyond a point this is when Gillette came up with a revolutionary idea that made their market share almost double Gillette noticed a trend of short slip clothes among women but those days female armpit and body hairs are not considered a taboo and Gillette saw this as an opportunity and started marketing underarms and body hairs as an unsexy and unhygienic fashion statement and introduced the concept of female razors and this strategy worked so well Gillette had almost doubled its market share just because it understood the real opportunity lies not in creating a new product but rather in creating a new vertical of an already existing popular product and if you have watched our Lululemon case study you already know Lululemon has done the same in the female athleisure market and within 24 years Lululemon is able to beat 75 years old Puma and Adidas just because they understood this simple concept so i have divided this video into three parts First we will understand why labor is important with reference to the theory of Adam Smith. Second I will explain why I am so bullish regarding women empowerment particularly in India and lastly I will explain the market opportunities. If you are interested only in the business opportunities you can skip to this time stamp. And for those who want to understand the economics behind it please stay with me. To explain you about the importance of labor Adam Smith in his revolutionary book The Wealth of Nations described labor not money not gold not silver but labor as the ultimate source of wealth he described how the division of labor is a key factor behind modernization by giving an example of a pin factory he noticed that a pin factory where one labor is responsible for completing the entire process from drawing the wires to putting the head is manufacturing less number of pins than a factory where each labor is specialized in one kind of activity is producing more pins with exact same number of employees This is the power of division of labor and when there is a division of labor three things happens the productivity of the whole system increases the skill of the person increases and most importantly it helps the person to make better judgment this is the reason why we see more innovation in smartphones within 10 years than a door in the entire 1000 years so next time if someone ask you which technology has the highest chance of getting innovated your answer should be which involves more division of labor And if you see the economic output of a woman who is not participating in the labor force is equivalent to a pin factory without division of labor because a woman is involved in variety of works from cleaning cooking gardening a home tutor and even an accountant for her home finances now if the same woman will participate in the labor force she will hire a maid a cook a tuition teacher and even start sending her child in school bus rather than dropping herself and if you mark the persons who were employed as a replacement for that women are from the lower income group 
so when a woman is participating in the labor force she is not just supporting her own family agar ek mahila shikshit hoti hai to pura parivar shikshit ho jata hai ye baat sahi hai lekin but also giving employment to the lower section of the society and this graph published by world bank also shows a strong correlation between women labor participation and gdp per capita of a country but if you observe there is only one exception those are these african nations that have high women participation but low gdp per capita to understand why there is a negative correlation let's take the example of ramesh and his family who live in a small rural town both husband and wife do day labor and both earn 10000 rupees per month so here in this case the number of women participating in the labor force is one and after few years when economy start developing ramesh gets a job of 15000 rupees in the nearby factory so now as ramesh is making equal to what both were earning in day labor so ramesh's wife decide to opt out of labor force and focus on the education of her daughter and as now ramesh has a stable job so her daughter can now continue her higher studies so that when she would graduate she can get an even better job so if you see this whole scenario the female labor participation is one when the economy was underdeveloped it became zero when the economy was developing then it again became one when it headed towards a developed economy and combining thousands of families like ramesh it forms a u shaped relationship this is the exact reason why few underdeveloped african nations have higher female labor participation because female labor participation is not a linear line with education rather it is high when education is low and it decreases with increase in gdp as now women spends more time in education then it again increases and you can see the exact same trend line in case of india where the female labor participation was high in 2000s then it started decreasing and now it again increasing so that's it we have a strong evidence to show that women labor participation would increase right well not really we cannot predict the trend of this graph because this graph is an outcome of different parameters first of all we should check the parameters only if those parameters indicates a positive trend then only we can predict the trend of this graph so by going through multiple documents i figured out five different parameters that are linked directly or indirectly with female labor participation number 1 higher education gender pay gap remote work culture fertility rate and parental living situation and here i want to draw your attention to fertility rate this graph clearly shows there is a drastic decrease in fertility rate and one of the major reasons why females opt out of labor force is child care but even if it is a strong indicator but we cannot consider this graph to predict the trend because females are preferring less children because they want to work not the vice versa and decreased fertility rate may also because of government initiative around family planning so all the multiple research paper shows the fertility rate as an indicator but i will not consider this point under correlation not equal to causation and the parental living situation shows a dual correlation if a married woman is living with her in-laws due to societal and family reasons she may prefer not to work at the same time living with in-laws can also mean she has an additional child care support that's why she can work so if this is clear let's move on to the other three points this graph clearly indicates higher education among women is steadily increasing education apne saath lekar ke aati hai employment or entrepreneurship so this is tick number 1 and this hindu article so the hourly wage gap has decreased from 34% to 24% this is again tick number 2 and after covid we all know remote work culture has increased it might not be the same as during lockdown but still if not completely remote a hybrid system is gaining popularity in india and lastly i want to draw your attention to what government is doing to empower women maine desh ki 2 crore behno ko लखपति बनाने की गारंटी दी द इंडियन पार्लियामेंट पास द वेमेन्स रिजर्वेशन बिल बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ अभियान के माध्यम से प्राइम मिनिस्टर पॉइंटेड आउट टुडे एज द नेशनल बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ कैंपेन सो एज ऑल द पैरामीटर्स शोज अ पॉजिटिव इंडिकेशन हेंस वी कैन से दिस ग्राफ आल्सो शोज अ पॉजिटिव ट्रेंड दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई आई एम सो बुलिश ऑन इंडिया because india currently has reached the saturation point and the stage is all set to get into this point and when it will reach this point 12 crores women won't be available for the domestic work as the gap generated from it will create massive business opportunities and this takes me to the final part that is the business opportunities and i have not included the obvious things like lipsticks or high heels everybody knows it so i have classified it into three categories education security and replacement and lastly i have mentioned what should be your approach to become a swell seller in this gold rush now let's discuss about education 
I have divided education into two parts, creating a new category through educating women's and businesses through education of women's. And if you see, there are multiple women related products that are still bought by their male counterparts. So as they do not understand the core problem, whatever the shopkeeper sells them, they buy it. So when women will start earning, they would prefer to buy those things by themselves. Thus, it will give an opportunity to create a new category of existing products and then educate women about the products. One such example is this product called Periods Underwear, which is more comfortable, more durable, more affordable and more eco-friendly than a traditional pads. So instead of trying to compete with giants like Johnson & Johnson or Mankind, you can focus on building a hybrid version of their best-selling products and create awareness through female influencer marketing. Another example I found is a smart tampon which can provide details on menstrual health and even detect cancer. If you know about the hoop band, which is generating 118 million as a subscription-based fitness tracker, the same model can be implemented with smart tampons. But whichever the product is, the framework remains the same. As women are now a direct consumer, build an upgraded version of existing products and then educate the women about the product. For the second part, I want to draw your attention to the data that suggests 60% of women want to re-enter the workforce after a career gap due to childcare. And you realize it or not, this is a big opportunity especially in this fast changing world because the skills you have now won't be relevant 2 years ahead. And data also shows that women who enter the workforce after a career break are often paid less. And it is a great opportunity for edtech startups to provide mentorship and training dedicatedly to women who want to make a comeback after a career break. Now come to the security. And again, I have divided security into two parts, physical security and financial security. To talk about financial security, multiple research has shown women are less risk taker than men's. According to this UN report, there are 13 million households in India headed by a single mother. And this is again a big opportunity for the finance and insurance sector. As women mostly prefer to invest safely, only 1 in 10 women globally feel that they understand investment. So by providing tailor-made life and health insurance, solving the specific needs of women, you can generate more profit and this can even go up to providing retirement plans and saving plans for the higher education of their children. But there is even a bigger concern, that is the physical security. Well, why are women unsafe in our cities? Why are working women in particular easy targets? If a man is working until late in the office, he can drive back home alone. But there is a high likelihood that a woman who is earning good enough will prefer a driver. It is again an opportunity to create an aggregator app for drivers. And I won't be surprised if Ola and Uber start a ride sharing services specifically for women. Well, I know not every working woman could afford a driver. So I found some protection gadgets like sock guns and anti-molesting jackets which are still not widely available in India. But by providing right awareness, a huge demand can be created for these type of products. Now before moving to the third part, I want to mention another miscellaneous category. Check this graph. It shows the increasing divorce rate in India has gone up to 350% in last two decades. And the main reason for the divorce according to this article is women are becoming independent which allows them to live unhappy marriages. And data also shows labor participation among separated women are highest. So this is again a big opportunity for something like dusrisadi.com or ristadubara.com. Now come to the third part that is replacement. And it is the most direct way in which businesses can be benefited. Just by providing a replacement for the work that otherwise would have been done by the women. Here another Shark Tank fam startup Broomer is exactly trying to solve this problem. They are providing end-to-end -end home care services. But this market is so huge there is still space for 100 other Broomers. According to a study, the home service market is growing at 27% and is forecasted to reach 65 billion by 2026. Beyond home services, this is also a big opportunity for quick commerce. So I think it's a matter of some number of months before Blinkit becomes bigger than Zomart. And replacement need not to be only services. It can also be products that has the potential to make women's work easier. Such as semi-automated dishwashers, robot home cleaner or smart cookers. And these were only a few of the market opportunities that I mentioned. And to conclude this, I have one suggestion for all the small business owners. If you want to take the maximum benefit out of this gold rush, don't focus on the direct consumer products. Rather, your approach should be to spot out what are the raw materials that will have more demand due to increasing women-related consumer goods. Or, in order to fulfill the demand, what can be done to fix the supply chain, logistics and R&D. For example, elastic fabrics are used more in women apparel. And although India is a major textile producer, but it is far behind when it comes to the innovation in lightweight stretchable material. So the business opportunity is not in the female apparel, but to figure out how you can outsource those technologies 
and manufacture fabric at a cheaper cost here in India. And that's all from my side. And if you could find any business opportunity related to women, please write it down in the comments. If I could collect some more insights, I will bring a second part on this topic. Till then, thank you so much for watching.